prepare for like a very impromptu one where I'm still in my my uh, dining room, like I said in the Monday weekly review. I apologize for all the echoing. His name. Hello, knights, lords, ladies, sorceresses, enchantresses, and everyone else throughout the whole land of Ambion. My name is V, and welcome back to Merlin Weekly! We are finally back once again with episode 7. The Secret Sharer. Now, to kind of put the whole thing in like a small little gist before we get back into everything, it's basically the episode where Morgan is trying to find out who Emrys is. Even though we, the audience, already know who Emrys is because it's kind of obvious when you're just like, let me put two and two together. Who always knows what's going on? Who always knows how to thwart our plans? Who's always eavesdropping long enough to know how to succeed in things and is always disappearing long enough to do things that will end up kind of throwing our plans into the fire to be torched to cinder? And I'm not saying that as a viewer, I mean like literally you could piece that together as a person in the show long enough to be like, I know who the fucking sorcerer is that's named Emrys. But whatever, they decide to try and find out who Emrys is by kidnapping Gaius, which leads to Agravain trying to put the whole thing of Gaius is the traitor into motion with Arthur because by this point in the series, Arthur is a moron. Like he's a bona fide moron. And that's the whole gist of the episode. With the antagonist being a, a Chitha by the name of Alathor and Morgana, of course, it's basically just the whole episode of who can Arthur trust? Which is a stupid thing to point out because we already know who he can trust. And his questionability in who to trust has always been his biggest downfall, him and Uther's. But, eh, whatever. On the other side of things, we had a good episode about how far Merlin will go for Gaius in a way that we haven't seen in a while because it's mostly just the whole thing of, I need to save Arthur, I need to save Arthur, I need to save Arthur, I need to save Camelot, I need to save this magical creature, I need to save Arthur. I mean, it doesn't really show that whole thing of a father-son bond thing that we get used to from the last three seasons, so it was kind of refreshing to see how far this would go. And, as a good return to form, Gawain had his own bit of screen time to be important to the plot line to usurp all of Agravain's plans into the cinder with Merlin. And we even got to see that this does continue from the last episode where Morgana got her ass kicked only for the same thing to happen in this episode where it's by two older gentlemen beating the shit out of her with magic. At this point, I'm just wondering why isn't she just dead already? But, you know, I guess we can't think of like a new antagonist to throw anyone's way. Like the Green Knight as like a serviceable antagonist for a couple of episodes to bring back Morgana. I'm just saying. But uh, how do I really go over this whole episode without trying to give away too, too much? Because a lot of these things kind of give foreshadowing to later events. That's the tricky part because I want to talk about this episode in great detail, but I don't want to give away some of the red herrings that this does give into for not only the season finale to the next season to come and to what I heard is a Sims machinima that's supposed to be a continuation for season six that was never really greenlit. Shout out to one of the viewers that pointed that out to me. You know who you are because right now I'm trying to think of so many things that my mind is kind of scrambled on names. But thank you, Laura. Uh, where do we even try to say anything else besides just, it's a good way to show that Arthur has a long way to go as a king. It shows that Merlin in this episode at least has a legion of people that if the budget was big enough, they could have literally shown that he had legions of individuals that want to give their life for him where he could have magical friends inside of the walls of Camelot 
to then have his own legion of magical friends that could help him in day-to-day -day activities. That would have been interesting. That would have been wonderful. That would have been glorious. In fact, can someone in Britain kind of start up a comic book that does like in between sods of all the events of Camelot where it showed that Merlin could have friends and may or may not have a magical love interest? I mean, that just might be a fan dream or whatever, but let's make it happen. Do a hashtag or whatever. Let's get this underway. So that's all I can really say because episode seven is just too foreshadowy for future events and it bugs my mind because of how frustrating it is to talk about. So how do I make this up to you guys since I've been away on a mental health retreat? Um, I got it. How about Thursday you guys get another Merlin Weekly? That way you guys get two in a row. I'll see you guys on Thursday.